Uh, hi everyone, I'm Ye Jia Liu, a graduate student from Simon Fraser University, supervised by Dr. Arvind Shanti. Thanks to Iowa Hockey Analysis Conference for accepting my paper. Today, I'm going to present my research topic, Model Traits for Identifying Exceptional Players in the Unnatural Draft. Well, as we all know, it's important for every team, especially the team manager, to draft prospects to build a successful team. Our goal is to rank players for the draft picks based on the statistics from the junior leagues. The closest work from our side to our study is from Don Shukers in 2016. He built a generalized deep model using the pre draft statistics. We build a ranking should have pretty good power for future and actual performance for a drafted player. Also, it should be easy to understand for hockey experts. The innovations of our work can be summarized as follows. We use a model tree to generate new predict, new predict models to rank players. The model tree basically combines the advantages of regression-based approach and similarity-based approach. Compared to a single regression model, our model tree is an ensemble of regression models, potentially with greater predictive power, while compared to the cohort-based approach. Our model tree does not require user to specify the similarity matrix, since it can learn from the set automatically. Different from many previous work, which many focus on predicting the number of games played by a player, we predict whether a junior player can play as one game in the NHL or not. Then we rank players by the chance of playing at least one game in the NHL. Now we are going to introduce our data set. Our data set are many from the NHL.com and the Elite Prospects. We got the rankings from Central Scouting Service from the DraftAnalysis.com. Our inputs are composed of demographic metrics such as height, age, weight, etc., and the performance statistics such as against plate. Our data sets are publicly available in our GitHub repository, both the pre-processed one and the original data sets. We also developed a browser to show our data sets. Here is a screenshot of our data browser. This browser allows users to choose the input metrics he wish to see in the x-axis. Then you can view the data distribution between the number of guest plans and the input metrics among different years. There are also three checkboxes on this screenshot. Um, this list this will allow you to generate a new slide to show the this relationship between the number of games played and the input metrics. You can also jitter the data points and exclude players who didn't play any games in the NHL. You can also fork the plot for your own use. For the Shark's work, we also use the number of games played in your player's first seven seasons after being drafted, since the team have the rights to a drafted player for about seven years. The highest ranking in our project is a ranking from the actual number of games played by a draft player. We also noticed that in our data set, about half of the players didn't play any games in the NHL after being drafted, which brings about the problem of access zeros. Uh, this slide simply explains our highest ranking. In the left bar chart, you can see that many players didn't play any games in the NHL about half of them in our data set. On the right table, you can see that the more games played by a player, the smaller ranking number he got. For example, Sidney Crosby played 782 games in his first seven seasons after being drafted. So he's ranked as first in his draft year. Now we are going to talk about how we predict the NHL appearance for a drafted player. As we mentioned before, there is actually zero issue in our data set. However, it also means that data set are balanced for the classification. And the classification task itself is interesting. So we decide to rank a player can play, as, can play at least one game in the NHL or not. We developed a logistic model tree in our experiment. The logistic regression model tree is similar to a decision tree, but each node contains a logistic regression model instead of a single value. From this example tree, you can see that its leaf load contains a single logistic regression model. Here is the tree we learned from our initial data set. 
For this tree, we can see that if a player sees his ranking is more than 12, then he belongs to the strongest group, group 1, which has the highest percentage of players who play as one game in the NHL. Then the tree selects the regular season points and split points. If a player sees a rank is larger than 12, and his regular points is smaller than 12, then he belongs to the weakest group, group 2. Next, the regular season plus minus is selected as a splitting point. It forms two average group, group 3 and group 4. Lastly, the playoff assist was selected as the splitting feature. It's not worthy that all the group 6 is a small group. It has the highest percentage of players who last one game in the NHL. Now, we're going to talk about the evaluation of our predictive performance. Uh, following Shuka's work in 2016, we also used Spearman ranking correlation as our evaluation method. There are three rankings in our experiment. We compare the high star ranking to the rankings based on the actual draft order. We also compare the high star ranking to our model tree ranking. Um, the last plot shows the relationship between the number of games played and the draft, actual draft order. The later a player is picked, the last game he'd like to play in the NHL, which makes sense. Uh, this slide shows our relationship between the number of games played and our predicted performance of probability of playing at the one game in the NHL. We can see that the higher probability a player got from our model tree, the more games he's likely to play in the NHL, which visually validates our models. This table shows a correlation between our tree model and the, the success metrics. We can see that um, our model tree performs much better than the actual draft order. The correlation of our model tree is about 0 0.8 in terms of the actual number of games played in the NHL, while the draft order is only about 0 0.4. Our model tree can also be used to identify exceptional players in the NHL. Just as Lawrence said in the Florida Panthers, the numbers are just beginning of the conversation. We can leverage the ways computed by our model to identify the player features that contribute the most to the player's ranking. We can compute the log probability difference of play as one game between a random player and the average player in his group. To find features that contribute most to the ranking, we only need to find the J that maximizes the formula on the bottom of the slide. We found the two underestimated players in our experiment, Kali Kimuski and Brent Marchant. Kali Kimuski was not ranked by Central Scouting Service at all, and his overpick was at 222. However, he played about 100 NHL games and won a Sony Cup in 2015. He also represented Canada in the World Championship. His strong points are identified as his nationality and the play of games played, and also the regular season games played. Brent Marchant was not uh, was ranked 80 by Central Scouting Service, and his hour pick was at 71. He played 534 NHL games and won his Canada Cup in 2016. His strong points was identified as play of games played, play of points, and his nationality. In conclusion, our contribution can be summarized as follows. We publish an NHL data set with the browser. We also introduce a model tree which can assign each player to its own group with distinct models. And we build separate prediction models on each leaf node. And the whole tree structure is interpretable for hockey experts and shows the interaction between player features and player groups. Our model tree ranking also creates well with the actual success metrics, the number of games played in the NHL. So um, that's all. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Uh, hi, thank you very much. That was an excellent presentation. A lot of detail, a lot of technical stuff in there. Uh, the only real question I have is around injuries. I know it's hard to get data on it, 
But other than that, uh, the controlling for that, for especially for younger players who don't have a lot of games in against their cohort, if they happen to have a bad injury early on, say Connor McDavid. Um, other than that, I would say it's a very nice presentation, so thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, just curious if you think that maybe including the central scouting service rankings uh, introduces a lot of sort of like expert uh, human observers, like sort of like into your model? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I actually I don't understand the question. I did include the central scouting service ranking and it matters a lot to the accuracy of the models. Okay, thank you very much. 